Hey everyone, this is Pallabi and today I'm going to show the 22nd game of the book Logical Chess Move by Move by Irving Janeff. This game was played between Pillsbury and Marco in Paris in 1900 and the opening played was Queen's Gambit Declined, also known as QGD. You will find more games based on Queen's Pawn openings from this book in the description below. Without further ado, let's start. So I started with D4. Occupies the center and makes way for the bishop and the queen to come out and also controls the c5 and e5 square. The pawn is supported by the queen. Black replied with d5. The simplest way to stop white gaining more ground in the center by playing e4. So here also the d5 pawn push uh, controls half of the center and makes way for the c8 bishop and the queen to come out. Now, white replied with c4. The objective of this move is to destroy black's pawn center. White offers a pawn to induce black to surrender the center. If that does not work, white threatens to dissolve it by c takes d5, queen takes d5, knight c3, queen a5, and e4. And white will have a strong pawn center. So, after c4, now black played e6. Black defends the center center pawn so that if white captures with the c pawn then black can recapture with the e pawn still maintaining the pawn center also making way for the f8 bishop to come out now white played knight to c3 a simple developing move towards the center which attacks the two central squares e4 and the d5 and adding pressure to the d5 pawn black played knight f6 Black also develops his knight towards the center, which supports the d5 pawn and also controls the e4 square. Now, white played bishop to g5, a pin which threatens to play c takes d5, e takes d5, bishop takes f6, queen takes f6, and then knight takes d5, gains white a pawn. If instead of queen takes f6, if black plays g takes f f6, then leaves black with a badly doubled pawn. The threat is actually of minor importance. What white is interested in is the most effective placement of his pieces and the development at g5 is extremely strong. It's pinning the knight at f6. After this, black played bishop to e7. Develops a bishop close to whom, neutralizes the pin and makes way for castling. Now white played e3. Strengthening the center by supporting the d4 pawn makes way for the f1 bishop which protects the c4 pawn. Now black played short castle, safety of the king and activation of the h8 rook. White replied with knight f3, develops towards the center, controls the e5 square and supports the d4 pawn. Now both the knights are keeping eye on the central squares. Also the f3 knight has an eye for of utilizing the e5 square as an outpost. Now black played b6. Planning to develop the c8 bishop from b7. However, h6 was a better move. So as to remove the h pawn from the vulnerable h7 square with gain of tempo. And after b6, another alternative uh, alternate continuation was knight bd7 instead of b6 to support the pawn push at c5 or e5 also it would prevent white from using e5 square as his outpost so after b6 now white played bishop d3 an ideal post for the bishop as it commands an important diagonal and aims at black's h pawn after this black played bishop to b7 black expects to control the long diagonal with his bishop and um, however, Pillsbury's next move puts black in a dilemma. Now white played c takes d5. White removes a pawn and lets black recapture in any four ways. None of them is satisfactory. Black captured with e takes d5. Black wants to maintain a pawn in the center, but his own pawn, but his pawn blocks the path of his b7 bishop and prevents it from accomplishing anything useful on that diagonal. Had black, had black captured with any piece instead, that would amount to an eventual surrender 
um, of the center and white would drive the that piece away by e4 and remain in control of all the strategic uh, important central squares so after e takes g5 now white played knight e5 a good move this is the key move in the famous pillsbury attack the knight anchors itself on a square um, on a square from which its striking power is terrific its attack extends in all directions affecting the queen side as well as the king side black played knight bd7 develops and threatens to do battle with white's knight and it stands ready to support to uh, support a break by c5 so the knight is supporting the c5 square after this white played f4 a good move strengthens the position of the e5 knight and uh, discourages black from exchanging pieces if black plays uh, knight takes e5 then uh, white can capture with the f pawn opens wide the f file for an attack by the heavy pieces and the e5 pawn is attacking the f6 knight and the knight need to move away from its defending position so after knight bd7 white played f4 and now uh, black played c5 black wants to attack on the queen side where after playing c4 so after this now white played short castle putting the king to safety and rook immediately to work now black played c4 a strategic error as it removes the pressure on the white's d pawn and relieves the tension as long as black has the option of capturing the d pawn and disturbing white center it is difficult for white to stabilize the center and until the center is stabilized the success of a king side attack is doubtful so the moral keep the pawn position in the center fluid reserve the option of capturing the central pawn let's just move back a little bit after short castle um, c5 and black is planning to play c4 he will have a 3 to 2 pawn majority on the queen side what he underestimates is the speed and vigor with uh, with which white can get attack rolling on the king side black must deprive white's attack of some of its strength by affecting by affecting some exchanges and then counter attacking in the center one possibility was knight e8 instead of uh, c4 knight e8 bishop takes e7 queen takes e7 short castle knight takes e5 f takes e5 and f6 this would comply with two important principles in defense an exchange relieves a crowded position an attack on a wing is best met by play in the center so after c5 and then white played short castle and then black played c4 a strategic error now white played bishop to c2 the bishop retreats and still maintaining the control of the diagonal black replied with a6 preparing advance of the queen side pawns b5 and then b4 white played queen f3 brings out the queen pins the d d5 pawn with the immediate threat of knight takes c4 pawn takes c4 and then queen takes b7 white is also getting ready with his queen to attack the king and to defend himself black needs to push one of the one of his pawns in front of his castled king which will loosen the structure and create an irreparable uh, weaknesses in weakness in the king's defenses so after this black played b5 black protects the c pawn and proceeds with his counter attack on the queen side now note how black's last few pawn moves has reduced his light squared bishop's mobility after this white played queen h3 threatening to play knight takes d7 removing the defender of the f6 knight which is the defender of the queen takes h7 checkmate 
So let's say after knight takes d7, if your queen captures d7, and then bishop takes h7 check, knight takes h7, and then queen takes d7, gaining white the queen. And after knight takes d7, if obviously not knight takes d7 because queen takes h7 and immediate checkmate. And after knight cross d7, and then uh, queen takes d7, bishop takes h7 check. And here if black plays king h8, then bishop f5 check. It's a discovered check and king g8 and bishop cross, bishop takes d7. Either way, white gains the queen. So after queen h3, black played g6. Black avoids being checkmated by making a simple pawn move. But this change in the pawn configuration weakens the entire defensive structure. The f6 knight is no more supported by a pawn. Had black played h6 instead of g6, then uh, bishop takes h6, g takes h6, queen takes h6, and then knight e4 blocking the diagonal of the menacing bishop, but white can play rook to f3, threatening rook g3 check, knight takes g3 and queen h7 checkmate. And after rook f3, if your black plays knight d f6 and then rook h3 followed by queen h8 checkmate. So after g6, now white played f5. A pawn is a wonderful weapon of attack. This one threatens to break the pawn structure in front of the castled king by f takes g6 and it will uncover an attack on black's f6 knight by the rook. Um, an attack which could be augmented by doubling of rooks. After f5, black played b4, still attacking on the queen side. Clearly g takes f5 is out of the question. White could recapture with the bishop with a tremendous game. Okay, so after b4, now white played f takes g6, good move, and then black played h takes g6. Had black captured with f takes g6, then queen e6 check, king h8, knight takes d7, knight takes d7, rook takes f8 check, knight takes f8, queen e5 check, king g8, and bishop takes e7, and white has a winning position. So after f takes a g6, black captured with the h1. Now white played queen h4, putting more pressure on the f6 knight. Black replied with b takes c3. Had black played knight takes e5, then d takes e5 attacking the knight. b takes c3, e takes f6 attacking the bishop. Let's say the bishop moves away and now queen h6 threatening to checkmate at g7. So after queen h4, now black played um, b, b takes c3 and then knight takes d7. Removes one of the defenders of the f6 knight. Now black captured with the queen. If knight had captured, then bishop takes e7. Queen moves away and then b4 attacking the queen. Let's say c takes b3 and then a takes b3 attacking the queen again. And then when the queen moves away, then rook f3 followed by rook h3 and then queen h8 checkmate. So after knight takes d7, black played queen takes d7. Now white played rook takes f6. A good move. And now black played a5. Planning to play rook a6 and exchange the rooks or support the g6 pawn. After this, white played rook a f1. Doubling of rooks institutes two new winning threats. First of all, bishop takes g6 and another is rook 1 f3. Then rook 2 h3 and then queen h8 checkmate. And bishop g6 is another threat. f takes g6 and rook takes g6 is a checkmate. Also, when white played rook takes f6, if black captures with bishop, then white can recapture with the bishop and threatening checkmate at h8. So after rook takes f6, a5, and then white played rook f1, doubling the rooks. Now black played rook a6, hoping to exchange the rooks. White played bishop takes g6. And now black played f takes g6. Pillsbury now showed 
a forced mate in seven moves. You can pause the video and try to calculate the checkmate in seven moves. Okay. Yes, checkmate in seven moves. Hope you got it. Let's continue. Now white played rook takes f8 check. Bishop takes f8 and then again sacrificing the rook. Rook takes f8 check. King takes f8 and now queen h8 check. Only move king f7 and now queen h7 check. King f8. If black plays king e8 then queen g8 checkmate. So after king f8, queen takes d7 followed by bishop h6 check, king g8 and queen g7 checkmate. So this was the game played between Pillsbury and Marco. And the principles we learned from this game are occupy the center with pawns, develop your pieces towards the center, try developing your pieces as quickly as possible, if possible develop with a threat, castle as early as possible, keep pawn position in the center, fluid, reserve the option of capturing central pawn, an exchange relieves a crowded position, an attack on a wing is best met by play in the center occupy outposts as soon as possible try to weaken opponent's castled king's position develop your rooks whenever possible i hope you like this game as well thank you for watching please like comment share and subscribe to my channel i'll see you in my next video thank you bye